Well, if you are a homeowner with a mortgage or someone saving a deposit for your first home, brace yourself for a rocky ride. After more than a decade of interest rates going down to record lows, they are about to head up. But by how much is anyone's guess? How many homes do you own? Over 40 investment properties now. 40 by 30. Move over Superman, this is Eddie Deleen. Honey, I'm home. What number is this one? Uh, I believe it's about 26-ish, <laughs> by memory, yeah. You've lost count, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More homes under his belt than years. And now even the book on how he did it needs a further update. No, I don't need to work. Oh God, I hate you in the nicest possible way. I'm so <laughs> jealous at the same time. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. You must be proud of yourself. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> in fairness, once you learn where Eddie came from, you can't help but be happy for him. From housing commission to a property portfolio of $20 million. So I grew up in Western Sydney and actually a suburb of Mount Druitt and actually grew up with a single mum and her only source of income was a pension. Houses across the street got like literally lit on fire. It was just that kind of really you know, rough kind of neighbourhood that I grew up. So that really lit the fire in my belly to buy some property and try to get ahead in life to you know, change the future. And there you were flipping burgers. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> flipping burgers. McDonald's actually worked at KFC as well. Like I've worked so many different places just trying to get my foot in the door and get ahead. I got my first job at 14. And as they say, the rest is history. By 18, he had a place to call his own. He borrowed and expanded, purchased again. Adelaide, Brisbane, Gold Coast. Doing his research to find affordable places that had potential. By the time he had a wife and baby, he could afford this. And then it just continued. His total, now 43 homes. How disciplined do you have to be? I'd work two to three jobs at a time. So I was working some big hours. You know, I'd do that for certain periods of time, like maybe you know, six months to 18 months to really save up a genuine deposit. Despite his humble beginnings, Eddie is now far from the average Aussie, with most people his age struggling to buy their first home. And it looks like getting harder. Interest rates will go up. I can't tell you when, but they will go up. This is Philip Blow. As Reserve Bank Governor, he's the man with his hands on the nation's financial levers. If it was your mortgage, would you be scrambling for a fixed rate or would you be sticking with variable? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, um, I don't know the answer to that. I haven't thought about it. But um, the advice that I would, would give to people is make sure you have buffers. Well, now is the time to prepare for rising rates. Uh, what we do know is that the cash rate is on the way up. It's just a matter of when. It's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of Australians. Sally Tyndall is research director at comparison site Rate City. We've crunched the number on Westpac's forecast. They think that the first cash rate hike will be in August and that the cash rate will get to half a percent by October. Now, if that happens, someone who has $500,000 left on their home loan could see their monthly repayments rise by about $103 every single month. And then if the cash rate goes all the way up to 1.75, which is what Westpac is predicting for March, 2024, uh, those monthly repayments on a $500,000 loan today could increase by a total of $428. Through the pandemic, Aussies have poured money that would have gone into holidays and travel into their home loans, which means many have built up the buffer Philip Lowe was talking about. But when the crunch comes, it's those least able to afford it who will feel the pinch. There are some Australians that have had to shut their small business as a result of the pandemic. There are some people who've had their hours slashed. There are some people who just haven't had a decent pay increase in a number of years. And young Aussies desperately trying to buy their first home will find more doors slammed in their face. Someone earning, say, $100,000 uh, right now 
No kids, no debts. They could potentially get, say, $750,000 from the bank today if the cash rate reaches half a percent. Their maximum borrowing capacity could shrink by over $30,000. And again, if the cash rate goes all the way up to 1.75%, their maximum borrowing capacity could drop by almost $120,000. So, uh, Eddie, help. Hi, I'm just calling up His advice take small steps and invest in something other than the dream home. But if you do want the one and only, Mr Property says this. If someone's going to buy a property for, let's say, a million dollars, instead of waiting to save $200,000, you could get in with a 5%, which is 50K. Yes, you've got a higher loan. Yes, your interest rate's a little bit higher, but you're in the market and you're building up equity. Because if you wait an extra two years to save up that extra 150K, or maybe it's four years or five years, the market could have gone up an extra 500000 as for Eddie, the sky is the limit. So you're just going to keep going? Yes, that's the plan. Keep going and just continue to grow my portfolio. But Mr Property is spending his spare time helping others. Have you ever heard of the expression, sharing is caring? Yes, I certainly have. <laughs> <laughs> certainly have. There's hundreds of people that I've pointed in the right direction. of. I've, I've obviously learned with all this information and it's like, I believe, to, to give it back. It made me wonder. Nah, what are you doing? Get out of my house. Uh, sharing is caring? You can't always bank on newfound friends. It was worth a shot. <laughs>